What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Couple Things. With Sean and Andrew. A podcast all about couples. And the things they go through. Our favorite couple is back. We are playing favorites, yes. Uh, Caitlin Bristow and Jason Tardick. We interviewed these two about two years ago. No, They're one three of our f- and a half years ago. Get real. No, two. I two don't years. know. You're wrong. Okay. You're wrong. They weren't engaged. Correct. Now they are engaged. And boy, has a lot happened since yes. we last spoke. Uh, Caitlin has hosted... The Bachelorette several times. Yeah, big time. She's won um, Dancing with the Stars one big time. Big time. Yes. Uh, Jason released a book. His career took off. They moved in together. They got engaged. Um, Caitlin has been on tour. There have been so many like life milestone roller coasters that they've had to go through. And we get to sit down and talk about all of it. I really enjoyed this conversation. It was on the longer side of what we're used to doing, but... Every moment of it, I feel like, was uh, was kind of insightful, if you will. And we talked about a lot of things, including how do you balance career ambitions with prioritizing your family? Tough thing that we struggle with and talk about all the time. Mm-hmm. I, I will say, I really felt like we related to them uh, more than we ever have in this interview because what they're going through right now and er, like all of those life milestones is everything that we have gone through in the past six years. And especially seeing them be engaged and go through it. We just, um, really got to talk about some like the deeper sides of relationship, which was really cool. So we're excited to share this episode with you. Excited to hear your feedback. And before we jump in, please subscribe to the show and give it a rating on whatever platform you're listening on. That's our favor to ask of you now. Thank you to Jason and Caitlin for sitting down with us. And thank you for listening. Without further ado, we bring you Caitlin Bristow and Jason Tardick. I'll say something. I'll have some bad day or experience, and I'll be, like, venting about it. And he'll give me a solution. I'm like, I don't want a solution. Stop giving me a solution. Caitlin now starts those vents with, before I vent, I'm telling you, I don't need a solution. (laughs) I like that. I just need that awareness. And I'm like, well, I need that expectation. Thank you. Oh, gosh. Yeah. I just want you to, like, hug me and say, wow, that must have been really hard. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) That's all I want. But he's, like, gets out his spreadsheet. (laughs) Yes. Or and puts together a PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> or if something happens, uh, he'll like just call them. I'm like, no, that's not an option here. I just yeah. need to tell you about it. I do have a soft spot in my heart for PowerPoint presentations. He does. Okay, go on. One of my Christmas presents to Sean was a PowerPoint presentation. Oh, that's every sweet. year. I bet and it was, was romantic though. Good, I feel every really. year. It what, is what, actually. It? I would highly encourage this. We started doing this three years ago, four years ago, but like we got tired of trying to like figure out what gifts we wanted so instead of doing gifts we do presentations to each other of and we'll like figure out a category each year but like last year it was vacations so he would pitch to me his top three like dream vacations for that year and i would do the i like i would do the same thing and then we each get to pick one but you gotta that's amazing really gotta sell it you're like yeah i'm talking breweries i'm talking (laughs) views i'm talking Asheville, north carolina (laughs) the year before (laughs) we really wanted a new art piece for our house so like we had to pitch each other like three pieces of art it was it's so cheesy but it's actually really fun i like that but i would be you would be so good at that and i hate being bad at things and i would be really bad at that yeah how long have you been doing this three Three, four years I'm not saying this because we're on camera. I mean this. I like if someone said to you, "Think about the five healthiest couples of people you know." I would put you two in that category. Yes, yeah, yeah I would too. Like, Based off of on what? the same team, you just think like you're like, why don't we get Thanks, into their gifts? Like, let's like make an experience out of it. And you know, want you to like, like, you both want to include your friends and things, and like have oh, yeah. special time and yeah. like quality just time on and on the same page and like everyone on the same page. Thanks, gift guys. Giving what's what's the secret? Speaking of, I'll get to that question. <laughs> Speaking of including friends, though, I just, I we just want to spend more time with you guys. So like, well, we, we love it, we well, even do? though we missed the can, last game night, but we loved it. Closer to like an hour away than what you <laughs> yeah, are. Yeah, I'm live. sick of living in Kentucky. <laughs> in Kentucky. <laughs> I yeah. am sick of it. I'm like, kidding. It used to be so convenient for flying all no, the time, we're not but kidding. now I'm like, eh. yeah, no, yeah. we need to move. Yeah, yeah. 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 To move. I want to hear your take on this because yeah. I do one thing. I just, I feel like you and I kind of. I think similarly as Caitlin was alluding to, but it's always, I I view our relationship. Mm -hmm. I'm also not saying we're doing it right, but I view our relationship as like a, it's like practice. Like when I'm practicing for football, it's like, all right, 
I got to show up and do something different today than I did yesterday to see if it helps me perform better than it did before. So like really like we just, I don't know. You both have the athlete mindset. Yeah. 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 Where it's like, all right, we got to improve this. And so like we argued about dogs yesterday and we're arguing about it again today. How can we approach it It's usually dogs. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> but that's then you're doing just fine yeah i would say that's <laughs> yeah, pretty good you're just arguing about the dogs <laughs> that is really good what's your approach to your relationship i think the approach is kind of like what we talked about earlier like how when we have these like big blow-ups or when we're having issues do we get try and get to the core of it and then talk about it and try to do our best to not let it repeat i think it's something that we're not maybe the best at no we suck but it's definitely <laughs> like something that I think you try to do because if you, you just keep, you're going to bang your head on the wall a hundred times over. If you're repeating the same fundamental issues over and over and over. That's, that might be a me problem. I am like, I do arguments like I do a Taylor Swift song. Like I just beat a dead <laughs> horse and I just like put it on repeat and I can't get over it yeah. <laughs> until I am. And then it's done. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm the same way though. She's laughing hysterically. You're like, yeah. Right. Hey, we've all got something to work on. That might be mine. I I just I don't know what it is because I think I used to pride myself on getting over things really fast and now I've changed into more of a stubborn human being where I don't get over things as fast. I don't know why. I don't know what you you're supposed to grow and evolve as a woman and I'm going backwards. <laughs> yeah. Well, so on that point and I would this is where I maybe slightly disagree with you. Like I've changed my mindset to, hey, I'm going to try to never have this argument again with Sean more towards actually we're probably going to have a similar argument yeah. like this again. I will bring it up. And again. so yeah, making it less about what can Sean do different in the argument and like what can we do different? It's like, oh, no, what can I do different next yeah, time? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Approaching it. And that's where I think the power of like long term relationships. You guys have been together for how long? Three and a half. half Three and a half years. Where it's like you're gonna you're gonna have repeat conflict or repeat situations mm-hmm. in general. And it's like there's so much self improvement that can happen when you're forced to realize, all right, friggin' this is the eighteenth time we've talked about the dishes <laughs> and the first seventeen didn't go well. So how can I approach it differently? Does that but make sense? I, so I completely agree with that. But I would say that usually when those dish conversations come up, it's not actually the dishes. No. And so, like, what I want to know is, like, what, like, to me, I'm, I, I have this, like, rational mindset, right? So I'm logical. So if it doesn't, if, if the reaction or something isn't logical, in my head, I'm like, well, I have to figure out what the root, like, where's the cavity? What's going on? You like, what is say the that. <laughs> you say That's that. But in the, moment, <laughs> in the moment, in the moment, I yeah. feel the same way. I'm like, clearly this can't be about the dishes. <laughs> like, but you're like, no, it is. And you don't, because sometimes you just don't want to go there. So you'll... And I'm like, what is the root of the problem? You I say that, but that happens with us so much. And I feel like it happens with people who like start to know each other really well. I know when it's not about the actual topic before he does. Mm. Yes. Like he'll, we'll start arguing and he'll be in a mood of some no. kind. No. Yes. Sean. Yes. No. And I will be like, freaking, you know, it's, this. it's not the freaking dishes. I know it's not the freaking dishes. It's mm. like something that happened earlier today that yeah. put you in a bum mood and now you're taking it out on the freaking dishes. Does yeah. Caitlin do this where like one day you're not always full <laughs> hype mode Jason. Like yeah. some days you're just like, oh, I'm chill today. Yeah. And Sean will be like, Andrew, what's wrong? And I'm like, nothing. And then she's like, well, you said nothing. So now I know something's wrong. <laughs> I'm like, leave me the freak alone. What? <laughs> Let me just live my life. I actually like when Jason takes it from a Mach 10 to a Mach yeah, 2. Yeah, I was going to say, it's usually, I'm usually, it's usually the opposite. I'm like, Jay, what's wrong? What's the problem today? What's uh, going on? I, you I with that? me, that yeah. you're usually like that to yeah, me? Yeah. Yeah, I've been really grumpy lately. Yeah. I don't know what it is. If it's, I always blame the moon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Must like, be the moon. <laughs> yeah. Mercury and Gatorade. Retrograde. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to catch me one day <laughs> yeah. just like motherfucking the moon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sick of your shit the last no, three months. No, that was a confession. <laughs> that was a confession on my podcast the other day. I had like this astrologist on. And my confession to her was that I got mad at the moon the other day because I was like asking the universe for signs and like doing all this stuff that I do. And it, they didn't give it to me. And I <laughs> went to let out the dogs and I saw the moon out of the corner of my eye. And I was like, 
And I, I genuinely <laughs> felt mad at the moon. Dude, <laughs> I like on. blamed it for my own problems. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh. I did. I also don't know if you ever do this. This is my uh, psycho side. Sometimes I will be starting arguments or I'll be in a mood and I, I know it. Oh, yeah. Like my san, like sane side is yeah. like, what is going wrong? Like, yeah, what you are have you like doing? an out of body experience. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But I still go. Yeah. I'm still like, bring it on. Is it when you're hormonal? Because it's Probably. stronger than me. Probably. My, my hormones <laughs> yes. are stronger than me. They take and over. I'll like, I have a tiny little <laughs> rational part of my yeah, brain. Exactly. And that part is like, you, you're doing it. And then I have like an argument <laughs> with myself in my brain where I'm like, it's not because I'm hormonal. And then the rational side is like, it is. If you check the calendar, it definitely is. And I'm like, but I don't want you to be right. And I don't know why my brain isn't on the same team as me. I yes. don't get it. Yeah, same. Yeah. It happens a lot. And then later on, I'll come, you guys are like, oh my God. Later, like later on, I'll come around and I'll be like, babe, like I, I knew, like I know I was being crazy. Well, at least you come around. See, what, I think one of the problems I do is like in those times where I know there's not one thing I could do right, say, or there's literally nothing I could do that's going to turn there's good. a few things. I will just withhold. I sent you an email about it. I will just like <laughs> withhold. So I won't say anything. So like then I won't say anything. I'll be like, oh, nope, I'm not going to bring that. I'm not going to talk about that. I'm just not stepping into that. And then it'll be like a week later. And then she'll actually like say yeah. something to me. And then I have this like buildup of a lot. I'm like, well, what about this, 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 this? <laughs> yeah. Cause I didn't say for a week because I'm like worried about the <laughs> reaction during okay. that time. But my, my period <laughs> app sends him emails about the phase I'm in during the month. So really? like, wait, that's actually week, smart. And what it'll give suggestions. Have you ever that. read it? It's not. It's I, not. I have. Do you want to get what? sick? There's 48,834 unread emails in my inbox. Well, and they're all uh, about her. No, no, no. Okay. So I'm not <laughs> <laughs> that should be a flagged most important email in your inbox. I know, but should be starred, they get yellow like, starred. Yeah, I, I can't. Sometimes they write the emails and I'm with them, and then they start going into the moon stuff, and I get lost, mm -hmm. like energies and stuff. And I'm you not saying it's a bad thing. I just don't. I don't. Jason like, researches do do? everything on the planet. Just do a little research into the planets. <laughs> <laughs> Who was that? The lady with the school bus? She was big on the planets. Remember Mrs. It? Frizzle. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> yes. What a pull. <laughs> I remember the book with like all the planets. Yeah, that. Mrs. Frizzle. The magic Mrs. school bus. Book. Was she big into astrology though? Yes, yeah, she, she was. did like. Really? She, she loved the, the bus. planets. I think you would. Wouldn't you take the bus? Well, you to did outer different. Space? Yeah, you no, take the bus to outer space. space. No, no, not every time. But Sometimes you go into No, but if you like learned astrology that day. Oh, yeah. Astrology is not the same as astronomy. Oh. Oh, no, astrology right. is like moon energy. <laughs> right. Astronomy is like planets. planets. Oh, right. She no, like I astronomy. Don't know <laughs> <laughs> she I am not Mrs. Frizzle. <laughs> <laughs> I missed that book. <laughs> Nor did Bill Nye. I didn't get that throwback, back, though. Yeah. That was a fun throwback. That was great. Yeah. Jeez. Let's get a moon person. <laughs> when they used the to roll the, the TV card into the classroom, oh, you're like, yes. oh, game time, yes. boy. Oh, Let's go. Distracted TV. Is she still going? Mrs. Frizzle? No. Magic School Bus? It's not. That would be a very outdated cartoon. It's on YouTube, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Wait. I have a question. Okay. I'm curious. So it's not very often or like every day that you find couples. I feel like we're similar this way. You both are very like headstrong. Mm. Both of you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Like very. very within like your ways, your opinions. Mm -hmm. You have your own careers. Yeah. You're very like independent. How does that work within like your relationship? Mm. It is probably our biggest challenge. I, I, I think that is what. Like you two are very much on the same page with everything you do. No. Not oh, true. not even oh, remotely. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh. Thank God. <laughs> I'm glad that was it makes me feel so, so much better. Okay. <laughs> no. I feel like we are s all those things you said are so true yes. and it's such a challenge for us because at the end of the day we're so tired and like mentally drained that we're like mm, we could talk about stuff or we can yeah. put on a show or like do something else and we like forget to get back on the same page because mm. we're so focused on our own things. And then that builds up and then we realize, oh, we haven't been on the same page in a while or in the same city yeah. because we're doing such different things. Um, so that's definitely a challenge I think we could probably work on a little better is getting like like having us time or mm -hmm. making our relationship more of a priority because our work is so important to us that we don't balance it out enough with making our relationship as important as work. Yeah, it which definitely. sucks. Sometimes we mm -hmm. do. We're just in a phase right now where we're just like. <sighs> yeah, but I think to your point, like we were both very independent. We're mm -hmm. both had strong. We're both like very stubborn. Mm -hmm. So that creates a lot of conflict 
in the fact that sometimes conflict leads with ego and it does not yeah. leave with any bit of ration. Mm -hmm. Like there's no, or, or just like logic. Like, what are we doing? Like this is, yeah. this is, My we're ego's just like spinning our tires for what? Jerk. Like where are we, we're not even getting anywhere. Yeah. And so I think that is, that is definitely interesting, but also the, the part of our but lives. What's the solution? The solution? <laughs> yeah. To our problem. Oh, it's probably therapy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we all know I'm like, all about therapy. You know, um, but I think one of the other things too is like we you, we live in these worlds where it's it's so different than if like we had like nine to five professions, oh, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. Because there becomes more routine and there becomes easier mm -hmm. ability to forecast and project and plan. And our worlds are just so all over the place. Mm -hmm. Like I don't know. Okay, boom. I got to go to New York for five days. This came up literally two days ago. And it's like, whoa, I thought we were doing this, this, and this. And I think it does create, um, I think we're both blessed to have those things. Oh, but yeah. it's also... It like with something that we respect about each life. other, but something that also gets in the way. Oh yeah. yeah. You know, totally. That's we, we saw a marriage uh, counselor a couple months ago yeah. and she was like, all right, describe what you love about Sean. And then she said, describe what you find most frustrating about Sean. And she was like, did you notice how they're pretty much the same thing? Yeah. Because for uh, me, it was like, I love Sean's ambition and her vision. Yeah. And she's always like making things happen. And I'm like, but she never lets me chill out. Yeah. She's like, they're, they kind of go hand in hand. So like the thing you love most about someone also can, can well, be the, the most aggravating. And the way uh. she said it too is like what you find most attractive at the beginning. Yeah. Every human being tries to change their spouse later on in life into themselves. Like they try to be the, like they want them to be them. That they want things is to so do their, true. Yeah. <laughs> so you like, you look for the opposite and then long term you, you want the same person as yourself because it's easier to live with and uh. you forget that's actually why you love them. That's like when I first met Jason, one of my favorite things is that he would sing musicals at the top of his lungs. What? Like, That's what yes. Andrew does. Come on. Let's go. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. You guys get that punch on camera. That's going to be a great cover. Andrew Dean. I did it. I did it. I did it. I did it. I already got my back rest from hockey. Now I have a bloody lip. Oh my God. Did you actually oh, what's your favorite? I did. I caught, I caught a lip. I caught a lip. It was a thumb to the. You got me blood coming. All right. Go. Uh, okay, music it was is my bad. Yeah. Oh, dude. Oh, okay. It was Anyhow. Lion King yesterday. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's Lion my King. favorite. Yeah. That's, They're all good. That literally is his favorite. Um, music man. Jason, I'm very sorry. My husband just punched you. Oh, in no, the no, face. no. It's out of pure excitement. <laughs> the intent was great. <laughs> Take that. And my face can handle it. Why, <laughs> <My> man? <laughs> oh, Okay. That's so funny. <laughs> but to your point, <laughs> circling back, uh, that is, and like yesterday you were singing, and I was like, why are you trying so yes. hard? Like, yes. just yes. sing, like, just sing. It. Just sing. And he's like, oh, you're singing, oh, Canada or something. Oh, Canada. <laughs> yes. I don't sound like that. You do. No, yeah. And I'm like, just sing it normal. And yeah. then I'm like, oh, that is literally one of the reasons I was like, that's my person is because of how you yeah. used to sing in like and now Broadway like, singing. And I'm like, oh. Ah! <laughs> Anders is, he tries to become Darius Rucker, like twang mm. and all. And oh, I'm like, twang. that's not you. Well, when right. I'm singing Wagon Wheel. Yeah. yeah. Wagon Wheel. <laughs> Yeah. Wagon wheel. What are you supposed to do? Are you supposed <laughs> to not try? It's called being a dynamic uh, okay. singer. You also, know? when I'm singing around the house, that means I'm like happy. So let me just live in that happiness for that but small it's sometimes, moment. It but sometimes it's so loud. I'm yeah. like, I just want it to be quiet. You you can admit you're quite loud like a human, as a human. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And see, you want to be like, just let me be happy. And I'm like, sometimes I'm like, just let me be actually depressed and like stay in bed <laughs> yeah. and cry. Just let me have that. Yeah. Uh, I want to circle back. You said at the end of the day, you're tired and you just wanted to put on a show. That's like, I feel like the story of how it can go no matter what the situation is, like whether you're working mm -hmm. a nine to five or something, mm -hmm. just it's that's easy. just crazy. But I'm, I've been thinking about the importance of like maintenance versus, versus if you, the the upstart cost of like uh, taking something from zero to one is way harder than like keeping something at one sure. if you maintain it. Does that make sense? Sure. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm verbalizing that oh, right, but like, so Sean and I have tried to solve that problem because mm -hmm. with kids and work yeah, and all this imagine. stuff, there's a ton of logistics. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the night, when we put the kids down, we're both dead tired. I and bet. sometimes, most of the time, we'll miss it. But sometimes we'll be like, all right, we're going to take 10 minutes and just talk about the day, mm -hmm. talk about what's coming tomorrow. And so we're both on the same page as far as logistic wise. And then it's like that's, a lot of times that'll, that'll just like open up uh, the floor for Sean was like, Hey, I didn't appreciate when 
you said X, Y, Z. Instead of heat of the moment, yeah. Yeah. you could talk about it later. We call it bev time. So it's like whether we drink Beverage. a glass of water or a glass of wine or whatever. It's just like we sit down, we have one drink together. Yeah. And then, then we go separate ways. And bev usually time. a lot of times we'll come in. And that'll be like coming off of an argument. It's like I really we're not making eye t- contact. We're like, all right, babe, tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, tomorrow. I have to go. <laughs> <laughs> this is why they're top five. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But how long have you two been together? Ten years. Okay, is the seven year itch real? What's what do you mean? Seven year itch. Never I'm heard. So this. curious. What? What? Never heard of it. The seven year itch, where it's I'm gonna literally just Google it and see what it said. It, like like a <laughs> itch good or itch you want bad? something no. different? Itch Discontent. Bad. Like a rough start, like a rough patch. Yes. So, okay, it says, the seven-year itch is a popular belief sometimes quoted as having psychological backing. What? That happiness in a marriage or long-term romantic relationship declines after seven years. I think it's the opposite. We're only at six. But at five years. Six years years married, ten years together. I've never heard of it. I would say like zero to one, we were like increasing. And then like one to three, it was like, all right, Mm -hmm. freaking. And then like five, I was like, all right. Yeah. I accept okay. Sean for yeah. who she is. Oh. Actually, we went. To, we uh, I wow. just wrote this whole oh, dissertation. Right. Five years. I just took five years. <laughs> we'll unpack that hold on, tonight. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> hold on. Yes. I just wrote uh, my buddy Jordan. You know Jordan Rogers, right? Yeah. He just got married, yeah. and I wrote him this dissertation on why I think marriage is the best. Let me oh. see if I can find it. Literally. But it, they, they walked through. He woke through. up in the middle of the night one night. I'm gonna write a dissertation on marriage. I was like, Wow. Go to bed. Oh. That's how Hold my brain off. works. I shut it off. Like yes. when I go to sleep, Jason can wake up at four in the morning and start like thinking about work. Words. And oh, I'm yeah. like, yeah, you guys are not you. No. And I get pissed. I'm yeah. like, oh yeah, I don't, don't. That's why I just get yeah. up. I just get out of the house. Yeah. And he room. starts banging around the coffee machine <laughs> at four 30 in the morning. I'm like, yeah, somebody else is still sleeping here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So they wrote, or I found they, that there you are mean different. You. Yeah. They, but I pulled it from different, like people had different phases that you go through in marriage. Okay. So the first phase is like the honeymoon phase yep. where everything mm-hmm. feels fresh, new and exciting. Um, and you, you don't really realize your partner's flaws mm-hmm. or you tolerate them because of like this. You like overall. find them endearing. Yes. Yeah. Then the second phase is the power struggle phase mm-hmm. where the dynamics of the relationship begin to like materialize. Like, okay, who, career is going to take precedence whose schedule is going to take precedence yada yada uh, like who's going to take out the trash you figure out all these like little logistics um i wrote a couple paragraphs on that and then it's the stability stage where you accept your partner as a un- as a unique individual mm-hmm. so it's like hey you know what sean actually she just is a go-getter like yeah. she, and i'm and as opposed to trying to fight that it's mm-hmm. like oh, i accept it and then you go through the commitment stage um where you recognize that there is no ideal partner or ideal relationship. You just choose to commit to the individual that you married mm-hmm. just because mm-hmm. it's a so choice. True. And then it's this, the last one is a co-creation stage where babies, you, you and your babies. partner both, uh, let's see, consciously choose to benefit other people, whether it be kids or like yep. your community yeah. in yep. whatever sense. So anyway, mm-hmm. uh, I, I will say though, the seven year thing, <clears throat> we haven't hit seven years of marriage yet. Is that this year? No, yeah. we passed our anniversary. Oh, we're at six. <laughs> what is it? We had our six year anniversary this year. Um, Which is amazing. Yeah, but we've been together 10 years. And I definitely feel like, I, I don't know if I believe in like the seven year. Right. But we've definitely gone through phases of like, this is rough. Yeah. And like, our marriage is hard. Yeah. And <clears throat> I think you just naturally as a human being go through so many different thoughts of like, everything. Yeah. And I do believe every single year, though, as a whole, it's gotten so much better. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's that's, but it hasn't that's gotten easier. But, like, <laughs> if I were to, like, I always try to say this. If I were, I wish, like, him and I could get married in the phase we're at right now mm. because I love him in such a, like, deeper, stronger way than I ever could have possibly Boop. thought. <laughs> At our wedding. (laughs) Really? Oh, my gosh. Because, like, at our wedding, everything was so giddy and just, like, naive. And we were just like, oh, I can't wait for the future. It's going to be great. He's the one. This is perfect and easy. And then you go through life and you go through rough stuff. And you go through, like, the ups and downs of babies and, like, just careers. And when you get through all of that, it makes your, like, bond so much stronger yeah so any doubts or questions or just human like side that you've ever had or thought really just kind of 
doesn't go away, but it, ma- it gets so much easier. Yeah, because you're like, this is sense. my this is my person. Yeah, you're what like, year? I've been through everything, everything. with this person, and we yeah. did it together. Yeah. yeah. What year in your relationship did you guys get married? Three. Three. Three? Yeah. Three. Three. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> I was just, think, just thinking about there on your. I'm just thinking. Yeah. I will say though, we got married year three together, but we were 23, 24. 24. And he had just graduated college and we were like in a very weird phase of life to begin with Mm -hmm. because we were both in like massive career transitions. We were trying to buy our first house together. He was bouncing around the NFL. Like there were a lot of very difficult things within our marriage then that made our first year of marriage um, really difficult. Yeah, that's that's a lot. Like those are a lot of big life changing and like pivotal moments. Mm hmm. As a first year of a uh, married couple. So, bouncing it back to you guys. <clears throat> yes. We interviewed you guys three years ago. Yes. And you weren't engaged. No. You had just moved in together. We you had just gotten phase. ramen. <laughs> yeah. Just got ramen. Yeah. yeah. Give yeah. me the yeah. roller coaster overview of the phases you've gone through in the three in the past three years. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, and now we want babies. No, I'm just kidding. Um, well, we do, but. You want what? to take this? No, I think you might be good at this one. You think? Well, we'll see. All right, here's what I think. So I come think up at bedtime time later. Yeah. We went through for sure honeymoon. Phase, oh my gosh, right? Yeah, I mean, couldn't keep our hands off each other. Like, okay. yeah, I mean, it was just yeah. like, oh, yeah, I mean, like, it was like. And like for a long phase. time. Yeah. yeah like, I remember you talking to someone being like, we're still in the honeymoon phase. And she was like, yeah, right. Yeah. And yeah, we're yeah. like, we really are. For a while. Yeah. And then I think, and our lives were moving so fast and there was so much change, you know, mm-hmm. it was like super like sexy and fun and then pandemic hit right so now it's like we're always on the road pretty much living relationships like pretty much like a long distance relationship because we'd meet at the weekends at the house like we were so busy yeah and pandemic hit Mm -hmm. and i think the stage was like holy shit like we gotta (laughs) like we gotta relearn Mm -hmm. how to live together Mm -hmm. and then there was this time where then we didn't live together at all no but then work wasn't the priority because there was no work that's true. And it was yeah. so much fun. Yeah, It that's was like, true. I would say like that was the most fun part mm-hmm. of our relationship because mm-hmm. we didn't have to go, you know, like, get yeah. this content out or go do this or go to this meeting or go do it this. It was like blah, we, blah, 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 we, blah. we relearned we to live with each other and then enjoyed and, like, it. Did, yeah. Like uh, played games, have a drink at, you know, three because we had nothing to do, whatever it was, cook together. And yeah. it was like this insane like engagement with one another. And then your season re-aired. So they did the greatest mm-hmm. season. And that was when Caitlin got asked to go on Dance with the Stars. Mm -hmm. And so that like tightness, like the world started opening, opportunities started to come up and it got full speed in moving Mm -hmm. opposite directions. So my businesses took off. And I think what happened was for literally like 18 (laughs) I mean, my businesses took off. I'm just (laughs) crushing (laughs) it. Uh, I was saying Dancing with the Stars, my businesses took off. Then you got the hosting gig. I mean, everyone knows all the success. Your vet is unmatched. Yeah, you casually hosted. Yeah, like just had like 15 jobs. But 18 months of just like living in different worlds. And then I think what happened was after Dancing with the Stars tour, it was like we had to kind of relive that stage of the pandemic. Like, okay, Mm -hmm. we're back under this roof. We're back here for seven days a week. Let's get on the same schedule. And there's so much pressure for wedding planning right now because we're engaged that we're like, we're just trying to get back on the same page. So like little wedding details come up. Like we still plan on getting married, Mm -hmm. everybody. Um, Like we have a wedding planner and Mm -hmm. we have venues that we want to do and all the stuff. But to actually sit down and be like, okay, let's set the date. Like we're like, no, let's get back on the same page first Mm -hmm. and like read, you know, get back in that phase where we feel like, excited to plan a wedding mm-hmm. um instead of feeling like we're doing it because we have to right now because yeah. we're we've enjoyed being engaged and i don't yeah. want i well i think we both don't want like a long marriage before kids we were like okay mm-hmm. it's a long engagement we're, we're gonna get married and then we're gonna have kids like that's i think yeah what we both feel yeah no we do <laughs> and i think the thing is too is it's also figuring out like hey where do we we i come from the northeast and you come from far west in canada for some reason, after three years, we still are just now having these conversations of like, yeah. we've never even bought a house be? together. Yeah. Right. Like these are the conversations we're having, right? We just got a bank account together. Like we're, ooh, t- ooh, we're like yeah. okay. slowly yeah. getting this together that like we, uh, so these are the types of conversations we're having. It. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's pretty crazy because I'm, I'm turning 37 this month in like 
<laughs> like 10 days. Um, and I have this thing in my head of well, we should be married because my body needs to have yeah. babies and blah, blah. But I don't know. I've got my eggs frozen. They're good. Right? Yeah. I think, yeah. I think all of that's a myth anymore anyways. Yeah, that's true. It's been a, but I think back to the question, just a, a wild roller coaster that yeah. has mm-hmm. come full circle. Like we've seen all the different stages, and now we're coming back, I think, to where we were probably like June of 2020, like April 2020. Yeah. Which is wild. Which is a good face. You which like is a face. good face. It's, it's getting to like the good it's face. It's getting mm-hmm. back on the same page. Yeah. Face. Yeah, which is a good you thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, it, like you sit down with anyone, and then you tell them, okay, for the last 18 months, your fiance has lived here, 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 and here. And then you lived here, here, and here. And then you had to split the dogs and drive across country to see each other. And mm-hmm. this is what's happened. And now you're back on the same roof. There's going to be hurdles and challenges and replanning and mm-hmm. reconnecting that has to be done. And so I think that is like the stage we're in right Speaking now. Speaking of restart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jason wrote a book, uh, yeah. which, which released <clears throat> April fifth. No, I was oh. for you. Yeah. You were like re saying all these re. Yeah, so you were saying all these re. So I was like, my I my brain say, went to. I always like rewired, reconnect. Yeah. Yeah. I anyway. finished this book a month ago. Jason yeah. wrote it. Came out April twenty twenty two, and it's it's all about how you can. It's your pivot from your previous career into yeah. what you're doing now, yeah. and. Uh, is it eight steps? Yep, eight step right. to what uh, from what you learned and and how other people can kind of make that transition themselves. Yeah. I found it really helpful. Uh, I've been through some transitions myself, and I feel like this was spot on. Uh, I do have you know, my podcast redirected, which is all about transitions. Three. Way less um, helpful and structured than this was, <laughs> but is awesome. <laughs> and also, there's an audio book, so if you want to fall asleep to Jason, <laughs> that's what Andrew did. I did. Yeah. I did. I did. I'm not gonna lie. I did. Um, sleep. That's amazing. <laughs> to make like a parallel, hopefully, like light at the end of the tunnel for you guys. I feel like we can relate so much to the, your roller coaster of your three years. So it was right after we got married, but on our third year together, I went on tour. Mm-hmm. Same exact time, did the whole bounce around the country. Andrew bounced around the NFL. Our careers went in opposite directions. We didn't live together. We were newlyweds. Wow. And coming back from that, Mm -hmm. it took a it took a while Mm -hmm. because you learn how to live like you guys are a a couple Mm -hmm. and you're connected. And then you go live so independently. So Mm -hmm. independently. And relearn how to be by yourself. Totally. And then you come back together and you're like, wait. How do how do we do this again? Wait, you're, you're annoying. Your cadence, your morning <laughs> yeah. cadence, like your routines, how you, and you're like, whoa, and like everything gets And you're so used to putting yourself first mm-hmm. that you naturally just come home and do that. And when we're both doing that, which I assume you two mm-hmm. were both doing too, that, that creates some problems. I feel like it was a year after tour, after NFL, when we moved in together and everything, it was the most in love I'd ever been with him. Because I was just like, the independence, like, we both enjoyed, Mm -hmm. but I enjoyed being back with him so much more after we learned to be back together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Do you foresee a point in your life or careers where you're, like, starting to say no to this five-day trip to New York or no to hosting? Because, all right, so background, Sean and I get our hands involved. Like, we always have a lot going on, Mm -hmm. which the... Downside is we're always busy, mm-hmm. but the upside is it, especially with kids, it forces us to like make boundaries. So it's mm-hmm. like, all right, we have so much going on. We can't do this anymore. We mm-hmm. have to do this. We, we have to have this schedule. We can't take this trip. This, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's like, it's forced us to carve out boundaries. Yeah. I we're, have a hard time saying no to a lot of things <laughs> <laughs> because they're all things I w- I'm like dreaming of doing. It's not mm-hmm. like I'm just saying yes to it because it's there. I'm like, holy crap, that is a dream come true. Or like, this is life changing or this is what I've like manifested. So it's not like I'm saying yes to like yeah, yeah, yeah. things that I don't want to do. It's just they've been taking up so mm-hmm. much time. Like hosting The Bachelorette is two months of being gone. And then they did back to back Bachelorette. So then I was yeah. gone another two months. And I'm oh like, I can't say no to yeah. these opportunities that I'm like so excited about. But now... I, I think about that as what, like, moving forward, I think we talk about that actually is saying no to some things in the future to make more time for us. We've talked yeah, about that. Yeah, I think what, and to like defend your point, I think one of the issues is 
we c- the worlds we come from are so weird. Mm-hmm. In the fact that Caitlin's like depressed on her mom's couch, mm-hmm. trying to be a manager at a restaurant, the, knowing this is. But in you have her to path. say when. This was early twenties. Yeah, I was like, wow. Yeah, okay. You're like, okay, wow. okay. Wow. okay. Well, finishes right. So <laughs> you're depressed, and you're, and you're in the late twenties, and I'm in a in a position in my career. I'm like so unhappy. Uh, deep, I uh, have no connection with anything in my life except work. And then you both are asked to go on this reality show. And mm-hmm. somehow this one show propels all these random things and opportunities mm-hmm. and platform. And then from it, you've been able to do something to build it a little bit greater than that. And so these opportunities come up. And just a few years ago, I was miserable in a suit reporting to bosses mm-hmm. I couldn't stand. And Caitlin was, you know, dealing with the stuff she had to deal with at the restaurant. (laughs) I had a friggin' care bearer that I would cuddle and cry myself. Right. But I think (laughs) the thing is, it's like it changed so drastically and so fast that you go from that to then ABC coming to your door saying, we want you to host the show. Here's some big dollars to do it. And you're just blown away at like how it happens. So to say no becomes so much more challenging. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you're like, I can't go back to that. I got to keep making the money. I got to keep stacking away. Do what I got to do to not go back to that. And we both have the what's next mentality, which is, oh, yeah. you know, so do we. I, I was going to say, I feel oh, like yeah. the two of you can understand that. Like, okay, but what's next? And then you're in it. Like when I won Dancing with the Stars, I was like, okay, like what is this supposed to feel like? I'm yeah. supposed to like, I've achieved what I've worked so hard for. And then you feel the exact same. Like you're obviously excited and thrilled and so proud. But you're like, oh crap, what do I do now? But now I'm like, but I hit the top there. So now yeah. what? And then I felt like I was starting from the bottom again. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, what else can I achieve that is life-changing? And then you, if you're not doing life-changing accomplishments, you feel like a failure, mm-hmm. which is And in this so world, stupid. it moves so quickly. Yeah. Like one week, things are flying. You are crushing it. Deals are coming in. Opportunities are being called. And it's like a month goes by, and it feels like a year. Mm-hmm. If things aren't on the right trajectory. Yeah. And it changes so quickly. The volatility in the world is, is just kind of wild in this space, too. One of my best friends just challenged me with this. I'll toss it your way. Literally. Apologies if it's too aggressive. But okay. Okay. I've, I've <laughs> never actually asked myself this question. He's like, you need to figure out when is enough enough. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And I'm like, totally. frick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. But, and because I guess these are all interchangeable ideas, but like good is the enemy of great is something that you hear. It's like, okay, what are my power? <clears throat> what? Yeah. Is the most important thing to me. It's like yeah. freaking my kids are mm-hmm. and my marriage is when and then when is all of this enough? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. That's exact. So it's I tough. I interviewed that is tough. Molly Bloom and she Love Molly. She Who's is that? Unbelievable. Yeah. I'm obsessed with so her. So you need to watch the Molly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, She's amazing. So we're uh, really good we're really close with Jeremy Bloom. Okay, got her it. brother. Oh, her, who's Molly a Bloom. Done. Yeah, watch the watch Molly's game. Okay. It's a movie. Watch okay. it tonight. You, you will know okay. everything you need to know about the entire Bloom family. Okay, um, fascinating. But it's crazy. It was, it's it's, it's a story of to her. when is enough enough. Right. She had crazy stories too. Like what, like the mafia was down her her, her uh, oh like no mouth I know with the gun about. saying yeah. like I want your yeah. game your cut just crazy FBI agent take her down anyway. But she's at a party with this massive hedge fund manager. Uh, is laughing at this famous author, and I'm blaming on his on his blanking, name, blanking on his name. But they laughed and said, "I made more money today than you've made in your entire career selling books, and you've sold eight million books." And his exact response was, "But you want to know the difference between you and I? Like, what's that? I have enough, and you never will." <gasps> Bro, chill. And it, like the Chills, whole dude. entire Woo! room went like silent. And it was his part. The guy who, who was throwing the party like put mm-hmm. on. I mean, it was spectacular. Molly was like. The whole room went silent. And oh, it was a, it was that a comment that I'll like, never forget. That Chill. is the a, ultimate mic drop. But I mean, it's good. like you're being a dick, and I made more money in a day than you've made in your yeah. career. And he's mm-hmm. like, "But mm-hmm. I have enough." Yeah, like, that's, and it's such a good point because you will be chasing your entire life. How do you for the get next there? Day. How do you get to a point in your life where you feel like you have enough? As somebody, like, as all of us can feel like, what's the next thing and what's? So I don't know, but I think my current thought is you don't you're not waiting to get to that point you mm-hmm. set the point yeah and you're like you know you hear about all these yeah, that was me winning if, dancing with the stars and i got there and i was like but now what yeah <laughs> I, that was i set the bar we're my, looking at you guys like you're there yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. like, yeah. I just, so what I mean, do we do we don't know 
I will say something that personally helped me. I don't know about you, but something that completely changed my world, like in regards to where is our bar set? What am I going to like extend myself to do? What sacrifice am I going? Am I going to make? Kids changed everything. Yeah. Absolutely everything. Because what used to be a hard sacrifice, but one that we would make is like, oh, I'm going to take this opportunity and I'm going to move for two months. We're not going to see each other. But like we made that sacrifice to do that. With kids, I just am incapable of doing it. Mm-hmm. And it's just not worth it. I get, I think and so it would be the same way. When you have, when I had kids, like for me personally, an opportunity would arise and I would look at, I would ask to negotiate, be like, can I bring my kids? Can we do this? Mm-hmm. Can we do that? And if we couldn't, to me, it was like, oh, this is easy. I, we're not going to do it. Right, right. And things just got so much easier. Yeah, because, I mean, kids are such a, obviously your biggest priority, but yeah. like they just change your whole life and make you see the world differently. And Oh, so differently. Yeah. So like, what's your dream job? Like right now. I got it. Dream. Yeah. Being mom. Shit. Aww. And I didn't think I'd ever say that. <laughs> I really didn't think I'd ever say that ever because I was always like ambition career driven. And I still, still have all of those be. ambitions. Yeah. Like we just made um, a goal of ours is to donate like a hundred million dollars to charity. Yeah. Is that a hundred or 10? Did I just add an extra zero? Um pretty good you should clarify that goal because it's they're different those are yeah (laughs) i'm just gonna say 100 it's 100 100. Um, that's what you said wow it's 100 um and i still have that ambition and that like drive and like dream but i won't sacrifice my children for that Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and even at the end of the day when we're, we're like working towards all of this if it's if it jeopardizes my time with kids i will i'll quit this in a second what makes you happy? Like when you look at your career, what is what you take away from your career that like fills you up? It's different before kids and after kids. Before kids, it was the feeling of success and yeah. respect that like the yeah. world sees in me. Totally. Mm-hmm. Um, now it's how my kids perceive me. Yeah. Mm. So that's beautiful. Whatever opportunity it is, if they grow up to look at it and it's some material thing, they're not going to care. But if it's a legacy thing, they will care. Mm. Mm. That's awesome. So it just changes. Yeah. So for you guys, what's your next step in your relationship? And I'm not talking like marriage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what is the next milestone you're working for? Whether it's like to reconnect or to move in or to, what is it? I don't know. I took the last one. Yeah. I d- well, when you say reconnect, I'm like, I think that is like my number one priority right now. I think it's yours too. <laughs> I like to think it is. <laughs> but I think that's like such a priority because it we have just been on such different pages for so long and we do want that mm-hmm. next step to be marriage, that reconnecting, which we're working on. Mm-hmm. Um, the other night we had like the nicest night. We played cornhole and had a bottle of wine and like listened to music and chatted and just hung out, which was really nice. Um, so yeah, and I think, I think marriage is, like you said, it doesn't have to be, but I think it is the next milestone for us. Yeah. Oh. No, 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 no. I was thinking about the, the, her question. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Okay. I would have done the same thing. I'd be like, huh. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry. That was bad timing. (laughs) I was thinking, cause I was thinking, I was going to say, yeah. And then like bounce off of what you said. Go on. Uh, I think it's getting, cause I'm trying to like, like really think what it is. I think it's like, we play for different teams right now. Mm-hmm. We have different people we work with. We don't do things together. We live in two different worlds. And I think the next step is like taking your team and my team and creating one team. Oh, see, like, I'm not on the same page there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but I'm saying like not not with work stuff, but like looking at things like this is like it, you and I are not only a relationship, but like an entity for hopefully kids and a yeah, family yeah. and other things. and just thinking more about us as one as mm-hmm. opposed to Jason's over here in New York and Caitlin's on well, his th- tour in Canada and then we're over, like, putting it together for one team. Yeah, that's a good point because <clears throat> that's what marriage is too, you know? Like, we have to think about what the definition of marriage is to the both of us and I think it is being like, we're not just Caitlin and Jason anymore. Like, we are yeah. together as one for the rest of our lives. And I think we both have a hard time with and, being like, well, just professionally yeah, that's and providing, right. like, that's the dream. Mm-hmm. I was, I didn't think you were going to say that. 
because the my next question was going to be suppose you had this hosting GMA whatever it is I'm mm -hmm. making this up my curiosity would be well if that was like your number one goal how would you balance if that opportunity came today with everything you have going on today in your family and obviously that wasn't your answer <laughs> and I think like having an answer like what is that your is like dream job? dream right that is like what is your dream, dream job I have to think more about it but like <laughs> I think like having some type of impact where you're like and I know this is cliche because of the restart, but like really changing someone's lives. Because I think it could be done so quickly. But you are doing that. From someone from like homeless to finding success or uh, terrible health to finding their happiness. Like I think there's so many things that we can do with the, the platform and resources we have to like really quickly make small adjustments to really change someone's But I feel life. like you're doing that. And that's, I want to keep doing that yeah. on a larger scale. Yeah. And I'm, I'm sure I have a ton. I could sit here for an hour and talk about that, but I'm not Oh, oh, thank her. She's giving you love, bro. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I She's really, you I love. was like, you're doing that. Tell me what's next. No. What's, what's your dream job? You said you're waiting on the universe to like tell you something or other. What What's your, what are you waiting I, on? I do actually have, like, I feel like I am doing exactly what I want to be doing in my life right now. Like podcasting is one of my favorite things to do. I absolutely love just having like an hour conversation with somebody where we're just like no phones and like having genuine conversations. Best. And I feel like because of the community from off the vine, like I will go on the Facebook group and just like cry my eyes out reading people connecting through that. And just like, I feel like I, my dream job is to like build this community of like empowered women. I feel like I've done that, which is great. And then I have a wine label, which has always been a dream for me. But I just like, t like what you said, it's always about like, but on a bigger scale. So like mm -hmm. I want, my wine to be in target. I want it to be like available everywhere. I want my podcast to like become a TV show on Netflix. Like I, that, but I'm, I feel like I'm happy doing what I'm doing right now. Today's episode is brought to you by better help. Uh, can I just say something, babe? Go right ahead, darling. Life can be stressful sometimes. And with everything we have going on, which is like kids, businesses, our life, just all of it. Um, just life can be I, stressful. Literally, I am just thankful for companies like BetterHelp who make it easy and affordable to talk to a therapist. BetterHelp is great. They're a customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. Plus, it is way more affordable than in-person therapy. Yes, and I love that it doesn't need to be a face-to-face -face conversation every single time especially being a mom that makes it very hard. And sometimes I just feel like using the chat option or taking a call is the best. We've tried out several forms of therapy and we can vouch for better help. They're the real deal. So if you're interested and want to give it a try and see if online therapy can help lower your stress, a couple things listeners can get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash eastfam. That's, that's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P.com slash eastfam. We'll also link it down below get back to it this is i think money is super helpful to put like just in the sense of putting a dollar value to things and if you think about like your time in the same way where it's like all right it's talking about the tour which i don't know how how long is this tour you're about to do in canada um it's um about 10 days okay so that's that's like kind of manageable but if you're talking about like a three-month tour yeah. actually stepping back and being like okay how much money is this mm -hmm. gonna and there's other factors like you connecting with the fans is amazing. It's mm -hmm. so special. We did a seven stop tour and it was like yeah. so fun, Isn't it fun, right? Cause you yeah. meet people, but yeah. stepping back and be like, okay, I'm going to make X amount of money, but I'm going to be gone from Jason for three months. Like what is like, not, See, not to really put a dollar, have, dollar value on but that, I but I don't like, really have it. a dollar value because I mean, I do that ever, you know, of course I do, but like going on tour with dancing with the stars, mm -hmm. um, it was great money. It could have been better, but it was like a dream of mine to, yeah. to like, since I was little, I've wanted to be a dancer. That's what I thought I was going to do my whole life. My mom was a professional ballerina. It was my absolute dream. So I could not say no to that. And looking back, I was like, that was one of the best three months of my life. Like, mm -hmm. and, and there wasn't like, it wasn't the right dollar amount, but it like changed my life. But I think to you, your point, like this is, and I'm so glad you did that. However, that three months set us back mm. like six, nine months easily relationship Did, Sean went on a four month tour after gymnastics the year we got married yeah. and it was the worst thing yeah she loved every second of it you're like yeah. with your friends and every night it's like this 
you're like on this high, mm -hmm. but that's not always a good thing to be on a high. It's yeah. Like some days you just need to be freaking on the couch with Jason. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I think it made me a better person and a happier person. Yeah. So there's something to be said about that. I'm not, I'm not trying to like degrade your decision. No, no, no. Here. I'm just saying like, it's, it's such an interesting decision matrix where you're like, freaking right. yeah. what is the right thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And these no, are you're stages, right. right? So like, that's a stage. That was amazing that like you were doing that, but, and that's awesome. And I'm sure there, you know, and then I, I had an eight, city book tour where you were home and that's you know eight cities not the same as three months but i think what also happens when you make those decisions it also creates a little resentment right because i'm like okay now i got the dogs for three i mean it's only dogs. <laughs> you got dogs you got plan around that you're taking care she's living the high life so it creates this like underlying mm -hmm. resentment that when you get back on the same page then you gotta repair the time away repair like mm. uh, you know just the mm -hmm. distance and different lifestyles and um that's just i would say too life. i'm similar to you like I loved it mm -hmm. and in the moment like yes I learned so many different things and I had so much fun and all of everything but I do know if I were to get offered it again I would a million percent say absolutely not mm. it's not worth our relationship yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I would just work it into everything where like Jason and I could have our own bus yes. and we could do it together. No, like that's exactly. I would think of it things that are way. Just, things I are different. Where yes, you can. I, I, I hundred percent agree with you. Where it's like I mm -hmm. I did my thing solo, but now that we're so far into our relationship, I I see what it can do to our relationship. Yeah. And the negotiation factor of just opportunities in general as it pertains to our family and our kids mm -hmm. looks so different that we had an opportunity come up a month or two ago where we were going to go like across the world yeah. for over a month. Mm -hmm. And I desperately wanted to do it, but we couldn't figure out the logistics for the kids and for us. And so we ultimately said no because mm -hmm. it just wasn't. In amazing, the long amazing run, race? worth it. What? Is it the Amazing Race? No, that would be no. so... Uh, we're saying yes to that. <laughs> yeah, I would say yes to that. I could yeah. totally see you guys doing that. But, oh, you yeah. Kill it. With agony, kids. Yeah. The wow. agony of everything yeah. up to when you say no is like so... It's like, freak, I don't want to say no. I don't want to say no. Yeah. And then you say no and you're like, oh. Yeah, and bad. then yeah. you have right. that time back and you're like grateful for it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. You're looking at me like, like, right, guys? <laughs> <laughs> I, and I also think it becomes a a a yes yes game too, right? So if maybe there was something I would have said no to, or Caitlin would have said no to, but mm -hmm. then I said yes to some. It's like, all right, well, he's well, he's going to do that. I'm going to go do this, uh -huh. right? Like you're in Canada, all right? Great, I'm going to go find this opportunity yeah. and go over there. And then it becomes like a yes yes thing, which can get that is you to a T. I think it's both of us. Oh, sometimes. that's us too. That's you for sure. Yeah, we're very similar that way. Yeah, because you're I, so competitive. But I, I love downtime, like alone time, downtime, not doing anything for like days. Yeah. I really like, I need that to just be like better at everything that I'm doing, including relationships. I can't stand that. Jason can't do it. I can if do I like go somewhere, day. he's he like, oh, well, I'm going day, there. I'm going to go can't somewhere too. sit still. <laughs> yeah. I, can't, I have to, like, I, like, I need to probably go see a doctor about that. You but need I'm to always sit still. Going Sitting still is like one of the best things I've ever done for myself is just being still. Oh, I totally agree. It's like a very healthy way. thing to do. And I could do it like Sunday. Yeah. But then, then that's like it. Like I got, like Monday I can't, I'll be up at five. Like, all right, let's go. No, Andrew randomly on Saturday was like, had a buddy text him saying he was going to run a marathon or a triathlon on Sunday. And he's like, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> So he did it. I crushed it. But no way. And then, you did it? And then so after yeah. the triathlon, he's like, I think I'm going to get my pilot's license. I'm going to go get it. And so <laughs> That's he how goes my brain works. That's it's very literally, he's just always it? looking. I took my first lesson. He took his first lesson. Wow. Do you have 2020 vision? Uh, yes. Oh. Do you? Do you? Yeah, I do. Um, <laughs> wait, isn't that a myth? I just feel like I don't you. I think you have to. Oh, I thought you had to to be a pilot. I think it's colorblindness. Yeah, oh, maybe bad. that's. Oh, yeah, that would be scary. That would, yeah. yeah that'd be so okay, bad. so wait. another. No, I have a question. Okay, fine. I have a question. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm like, okay, pilot. And this is a hard one to answer. <laughs> okay. So we might <laughs> have um, community bev time after this. Okay. Um, so you guys are saying that potentially your next milestone that you will work for is you're getting married. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. What's individually your biggest fear with marriage? Mm. Mm. I have a lot of fears because I come from a divorced family. Mm -hmm. 
And so I have like the fears of falling out of love, um, someone giving up. What a, I have so many fears. Yeah. Um, I'm yeah. I think my biggest fear in a marriage. Wait, are you asking like my fear of just in general with you guys? Okay, yeah. Um, probably that something more like because of the mindset, and he can turn this back on me too because I have the same mindset. But him having the mindset of what's next, what's better, what's here. Mm-hmm. Um, makes me think he could do that in a relationship. Like, oh, what else is out there? And he could get very sick of me because that's you do that in a relationship. I feel like you get so sick of me <laughs> after like a long time in marriage that you'd be like, well, what else is out there? And you'd start shopping. That's my fear. Yeah. Um, I my biggest fear in getting married is the process of having kids and like not being on the same page and like a nightmare situation where not only your selfishness or disagreements are impacting one another in the health of the relationship, but you're materially impacting like the development of a human that you created. Mm -hmm. And like, if you say like, what's a nightmare situation? Like I think, and this this happens all the time, but what I would want to avoid at all costs is like having kids and then there's like a divorce Mm -hmm. and then egos get in the way and then there's manipulation and then there's like the kids don't like your your Mm -hmm. mother or father because of the way they've been you know manipulated or angled or something happened like to me that is just like the ultimate nightmare scenario Mm -hmm. and so um that would that is like like the nightmare scenario but i think the the overall fear is that you get married and what you thought was what it was ends up not Mm -hmm. being what it is after you've already looked at one another and committed your entirety of your life to that person like that is the ultimate fear yeah i agree and you'll hear scenarios like i'll hear and this is where like my solution oriented like trying to learn like what what happened at your game you'll hear scenarios of like we got married and three years later like literally a switch went off like i don't know who the person is anymore and i'll be like well Talk to me about before marriage. Like, were there red flags that might have indicated that? Was there behavior that could have occurred that you could have seen that? Like, how does a switch just go off three years after you're married? And to me, that's, like, the biggest concern. So let me try to make an analogy here. Because you guys are at this really awesome but kind of terrifying point where you're setting the foundation for what is the relationship going to be. You are, it's not like it doesn't just magically turn into something. Sure. You together make the relationship something. Mm -hmm. And I'm, uh, someone was talking about, uh, Pablo Picasso, I think was approached and like a lady saw him painting, he like just briefly took a a paintbrush and like painted something on a canvas Mm -hmm. and then turned around and sold it for like a hundred thousand dollars. It took him like 30 seconds sold it for $100,000. She was like, well, she, how can you do this in 30 seconds and make this much money? He's like, well, that 30 seconds took me 30 years, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And it, like this idea of, let me make another analogy where it's like <laughs> compounding interest, I like this one. right? Like with finances, sure, you have a, a you know $100 and 7% return on year one, you have $107 and the next year you have like 7% on top of that 107. It's like, the same principles apply to relationships where you're hoping you're hoping that when you have kids you guys will be on the same page yeah start doing the things that will make start doing the practices that will get you on the mm-hmm. same page now like yeah. Yeah. don't just sit on the couch and watch, watch mm-hmm. Netflix mm-hmm. like get on the same page cuz mm-hmm. things only will get more complicated yeah. and the so unfortunate true. thing and I'm not envious of this with you two is like the opportunities that you're presented with, mm-hmm. as, you, as you've alluded to, are so extraordinary. Like hosting a national TV <laughs> show, prime time, mm-hmm. not normal, right? Right. Very hard to say no to. Yeah. Uh, but like you're you're setting the practices now for what your relationship will be. So yeah, that's really good. That was a little really bit of a hot potch. Um, was good. I also was think so too angry. we obviously don't have the answers because that's I feel like it's everybody's biggest fear. Yeah. And you read books about it and you read that like people change and like what if the person I marry isn't who the person's going to be in 20 years. Right. But we all change. And Mm -hmm. I think because you guys are already so hyper aware of it and hyper scared of it that you're like actively working on it. Mm -hmm. And I think I probably cause 
a hundred percent more arguments than we would normally have because I'm so afraid of that happening. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's so why I do that too. Yeah. Every other day, I'll be like, I don't know you. Mm -hmm. We haven't talked in two days. <laughs> yeah, what I is happening? Are you changing? I didn't know you got your pilot's license. Like, I like you're not talking to me, yeah. and I will get so paranoid at the fact that we're growing apart. Yeah. That I will cause conflict in our marriage mm -hmm. to make sure we get back yeah. on the same page. And I think within our conversations, we try so hard. And I think it honestly stemmed from that first year of marriage where we did grow so far apart from each other that it was kind of like we got to we got to make sure this isn't going to happen yeah, again. You got a little taste of what that. Yeah. Was I in moments of like frustration, like the anger, especially the more like emotion Caitlin's showing, the less I try to show to to bring the situation. Oh, down. and that so I doesn't won't, work well here. I won't react. Well I either. won't yell back. I won't scream. I will just. Okay. And then I get louder. And then and I think because I want something before, like I just won't, give me something. And I'm like, I won't I won't do it. And I think to your point, like when you sometimes when you're communicating that conflict, it's because the conflict makes you kind of step into pain and the pain is what you need to get to the resolution or to be heard. Because I am emotional and I don't think that's a bad thing. Well, and Jason's very um, rational and that's not a bad thing, but he would like me to be more rational and I'd like him to be more emotional. And in arguments, that's where I want it to come out. Like I'm like, holy, how can you just sit there in silence and like think about work in this time when I'm like crying and like having a panic attack and you're like, I will not respond. I am a robot. <laughs> <laughs> I think I took it on the hockey ref yesterday. <laughs> Showed him a lot of emotion. Uh, God, jealous of that ref. Yeah. <laughs> I out on me. <laughs> this, I think <laughs> you'll appreciate this. Andrew posted something on like Instagram the other day. Oh, Lexi's going to laugh freak. at this. Where he basically like, wrote three sentences of like, I, I overdid it this weekend that I didn't have enough energy for the kids and I needed what, whatever. And I came over and I was like, you did a really good job articulating your emotions to Instagram. Can yeah, you, yeah. Can you said tell the exact me this same next thing time? To her. I said the exact same thing to her. She just didn't freaking remember. It. <laughs> so I'm That's, like, Jason, and I always chirp him about him. I'm like, I don't get Instagram, Jason. Like, yeah. <laughs> like I want, I, or no, I don't want Instagram, yeah. Jason. I want like real Jason in front of me, like not sales pitching anything to me about like when we talk about weddings, you're very much like, oh, the price is just ridiculous. And this is, <laughs> yeah. this is so not acceptable. And blah, blah. and I'm like, I just want him to be like, it doesn't matter. I just want to marry you. <laughs> and he's yeah. just so like, am I on the same path that we were on? Did I go somewhere else? In the conversation? Yeah. No, I'm liking this. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Is there a coach in here? Like, <laughs> you were on the perfect path. This is, oh, okay. Everything you were saying was great. <laughs> this is where my brain fights me, where I'm like, I thought we were on the same team. Uh, um, yeah, yeah the, I feel like that's where, like, I just want you to be like, well, I just, the cost doesn't matter. I just love you. I can't wait to oh, marry well, you. But those are, I, I don't find those like, dependent on one another like yes can't wait to uh, get married let's plan a wedding but then once we are planning a wedding like let's use our thought process and budgeting, like two different discussions yeah i guess we don't have the first discussion it's always like budget hey <laughs> wait this is this hits so close to home bro yeah i think we're still talking about the wedding budget <laughs> for this freaking day she's like you didn't because i'm it's I, it's the same situation across the board. Benjamin's getting married. He's like, yep, yep, yep. Lexi's budget, getting budget. married. Yep, yep. It's like, it's so a joke. It's silly. It's a joke. And, but, and the but, thing is, is I don't like uh, my blood boils when I or anybody I know is taken advantage of. That's what drives me with a lot of my stuff. It's the yeah. wedding when industry. People are getting taken advantage of. It is the wedding and industry. that's what makes me nuts. But, like they're the, but then, us. but Jason, I am so happy to like have the tiniest wedding in a backyard and like with our closest friends and family. He doesn't want that. And I'm so happy to do that. I'm like, if we're going to do it, let's do it right. Yeah, but then you don't <laughs> want to spend the money. I'll spend the money, but let's just spend it right. <laughs> there is no spending it uh, right in a wedding. Yeah, there is. No. Yeah, you there, pick and choose. No, look at everyone you don't need here. You everything. You just this pick and so, choose, you know? I, oh, man, I is, will say I learned a lot of very interesting, like, negotiating things when it came to a wedding. Because I'm very much so, like, Jason in the sense of if we're going to do a wedding, let's do a wedding. But Caitlin of, like, let's just spend the money. Like, yeah. I... Yeah. Which didn't work at all because I also, took all of it. Like, Wait, what? What was the problem though? Like, what was okay? What was your takeaway? Give us a takeaway. Oh, the wedding. Yeah, I've got takeaways. I learned a lot of crazy things. All of the BS, like you're supposed to do X, Y, and Z in a in a wedding. 
don't do it and don't ever contact a wedding. Um, they already have one. No, no, no not oh, like well, a wedding. I, I, um, like if you go to a caterer, don't yeah. tell them it's for a wedding. Just cater food. Oh, cater food. Oh. You say the word wedding, it's five x. Absolutely. I've that. <laughs> and oh, that's smart. Same exact product. You say and wedding, negotiate five everything. Times yeah. Because like we got quoted for a menu for an event, and it was, I don't remember how much per person. And I was like, this is way too expensive. I'm going to go somewhere else. I My budget is this. Yeah. And they came back with the same exact menu. They had just like changed out a couple of ingredients. And they're like, here. Yeah. And it's just like. Mm-hmm. It's all about negotiating. They're really trying to make money. And I think especially since it's your names, people associate that with like success. And so you have to be like, no. Do you guys have a tangible budget? Like we're going to allot X amount. No, Andrew, we still don't. I think for, well, for the wedding. I do. We for the do, wedding. but it's going to be more than that if you want the wedding that you want. No, it's not going to be more than that. But <laughs> <laughs> okay, then it's going to okay. be We're smaller. not going to get the wedding. <laughs> See, we're there you go. Right under that line. Okay. But you have so, talked yes. about a, a yes. tangible number. Yeah. Well, I think that's a good place to start. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, okay. And we had the bank account is dedicated to that. Yeah. That's why we started to join. every month. Yeah. Right. I want to go into a different topic real quick. Okay. We're going to keep them here for seven hours. If this we're is, this is, is our longest one so far. I love this. This like fills my cup. We a wine last time. Yeah, we did. I know. We did rose. So I want to put the cart before the horse real quick. You guys have talked about kids. And you both are of the mindset that you want kids. Am mm-hmm. I s- mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to yeah, assume yeah. that. Yep. Um, one at a time. You guys can, whoever wants to go first. Down the, down the road, you have babies. Mm-hmm. What qualities of each other do you hope to see in your kids? Oh, that's great. Um, definitely um, Jason's, uh, like, loyalty is one, but, um, like, your passion for being loyal. Like, not just being loyal, his passion for being loyal. Mm-hmm. Like, it's very important to him to, like, protect people that he cares about. And I love that. Can I throw one thing in there? Okay? Yeah. I think it's really cool that you said that. And just remember your biggest fear is that he won't be loyal. I I know. I tell myself that all the time. I'm like, yeah. I'm going to drive him to not be loyal with my freaking <laughs> no, fears no. over here. <laughs> I know. Yeah. That's true. There That's a go. good point. Good call. I think Caitlin's uh, creativity and her ability to like just be a leader. Like against what might be either like acceptable or deemed appropriate. Like you stick by your ways and you know your thoughts and you believe strong and you lead and I think that would be something that I would want. That's nice. That's really nice. Thank you for bringing that out in us. (laughs) That's a cute question. Uh, Here's, sometimes you can like get lost in the weeds, I feel like, and like, oh, freaking, we're talking about the wedding and we got this trip to New York and you don't actually step back. Yeah. So let me just provide my third party perspective. Mm -hmm. Again, we've known each other for three and a half years Mm -hmm. and we don't spend all day, every day together. But uh, I see, like, Jason is your freaking biggest hype man, you know, yeah. like your biggest cheerleader. And that's pretty awesome. Yeah. And with you together, I feel like it's a couple that I want to be friends with 20 years from now. Oh, we love spending awesome. time with you guys. Um, we want our also- babies to be friends. Yes, oh, I know. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's the dream. We move close, have babies, <laughs> family, friends forever. You also are capable of so much from a career standpoint, and I think you're capable of like changing the world in a positive, in a positive uh, way. Don't get stressed out by that, but like, mm-hmm. just like you, I'm freaking rooting for you guys. You know, thank you. I want, I want this because you guys are great. Thank you, and I do like the support and like the hype men and stuff. I do feel like that has always been there, but I don't feel like that lately. <laughs> I feel like I I feel like we're trying to end on really positive. <laughs> well, wait, okay, got, no, got you didn't out. let me finish. I think I might have something to do with that because I feel like I've been so focused on like what I'm doing and blah blah, and like I haven't been as big of a hype man, which has made you be like, well, then I'm not going to either. And I feel like we need to get back on like let's mm-hmm. hype each other up. All right, that's what that was my point. But Same team. I also think. Third party perspective. Um, never forget, you guys, we've said this before, we talked about it today. The opportunities you guys get, you guys are around so many extraordinary and not like extraordinary in like a good sense, just like extraordinary right. things. 
like you host a relationship show and you get to see things every single day that are not normal Mm -hmm. and that can make you very easily second guess everything that goes on within your home. Mm -hmm. And I think just realizing that they are weird and like what, what is at home is like true and good and everything else is fighting against that. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a good point. point. Yeah. Right. Gosh. It's you fun. guys should host a couples podcast. Is that how Yeah. Kick that thing over. <laughs> you should do it. Wait. Couples. You should do a couples book. I'm sure you're on it. Is. On it. <laughs> it's so funny. Well, because to bounce back, Jason being your biggest hype man, the at the type of Jason that you bring out, like the aspects that you, when you're around, that you highlight in him is so different. Because he is like a, when we, we had breakfast the other day and it was like, business business and yeah. it's like freaking great i love that yeah but also when you're around it's like you're just giggling more it's oh, awesome nice. it's good but oh that's um, good to hear anyway. i like that yeah. i like yeah. making him giggle uh, <laughs> anyway i didn't get a single smile the other day at breakfast <laughs> wow. I can't, I can't. We yeah. right and by the way we had little powerpoints wait last question uh, me? yeah ask him the question <gasps> you and me too you gotta, fine yeah, okay gotta. Uh, I want to pull this out from our first interview and actually compare to see mm. if it's different. Oh. Um, but three <clears throat> years in, mm-hmm. what's the best piece of advice you've been given or would give about relationships? Mm. Probably what you just told us. <laughs> 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 that was pretty good. Um, do you have something? I I don't know if this is the best piece, but I just asked this couple who got married in there or sorry they've been married for like over 40 years amazing and they just had their anniversary Aww. so it's like like tell me i, I said i don't want to hear like the fluffy we don't go to bed mad at each other like give me something real mm-hmm. what is it that after four and they had four kids yeah two of them were two of them were twins and it was very unexpected mm. and they lived in this little city this little apartment in new york city with four kids like she's like it was she goes i look back in my life with him and there were so many just like disa- like so many disasters. And how did we get through it? And how did we even afford it? And the only thing she attributed to it, because I really analyze it, it was just an outrageous mutual respect for one another. Mm-hmm. We had respect for one another more than we had for anyone in our lives. And so while things were awful and when we couldn't afford things, we just had enough respect to know like they're going to get us through it. We're going to do this together. And so she said, I think it comes down to really just our respect throughout the entire 40 years. Hmm. And I don't know, That's that really that cool. Hit, well, that kind of hit. Same kind of thing. Um, I can't believe I'm forgetting who said this. It was literally th- two days ago, maybe even yesterday, someone was telling me this. But they're like, my partner is my best friend, and I have to think about how I would talk to a best friend rather than how you can easily talk to your partner who's just like going to be there no matter what. You have to think about how you would approach that situation to your best friend mm-hmm. because at the end of the day, they are your best friend. Mm-hmm. I, I liked that too. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I love you guys. We love you yeah, guys. I'm just glad to know you guys. We, <laughs> we you guys freaking too. love you Thank guys you so too. Much for having us here. I can do best. this all day. I really could. Yeah. Well, now we'll bring you back that's when awesome. you get married and then yeah. we'll bring you back when you're like there having you kids, kids. And yeah. We'll compare it all. Did, <gasps> we, did you that. ask that question, the best advice question yeah. before? What was the answer? I don't know. I can't remember either. Should we pull it up? Lexi's going to pull it up. Lexi's going to be like, like an let episode me pull it up. To. Yeah. yeah. I will say one of my favorite things about this show, and this doesn't have to be on it, but kind of like you guys are saying, every t- single time mm-hmm. we leave one of these interviews, mm-hmm. we've gained so much wisdom from other people. Mm-hmm. Whether whether it's good or not, yeah. just like yeah, with yeah, what yeah, they've yeah. gone through, sure. it's really <laughs> <laughs> it's really cool to hear people's like perspectives. Yeah. Yeah, and I agree. I think that's part of why I enjoy podcasting too <laughs> and probably you and probably you like you just when do you ever just sit down with people and have yeah. real honest conversations like this Anymore. like looking each other in the eyes yeah. and like actually talking and the, talking about real things like it's so nice mm-hmm. there's nothing like you're, uh, my mind is not preoccupied with anything else yeah I'm having but being in this moment yeah. like that's so refreshing yeah it's very uh nice. you're able to just live in that moment of good conversation it's also interesting thinking about that. We live in a world too where it's almost like topics can't be breached unless they're in a professional setting. Yeah. Sure. Like oh if yeah. you were to go on a dinner date with someone, a lot of times you don't even get past the superficial stuff. Totally. Yeah, totally. Which is frustrating. I hate. Very yeah. Did you find, find it, it, Lex? Oh yeah, oh you my did have God. long hair. 
<laughs> oh my gosh, I just Wait, heard my see? like maniacal <laughs> laugh. <laughs> I love that. For you. <laughs> Oh my god, look at that. Fabio? I had a serious beard. Wow, you had a beard. Like a Dude, chair. I'll tell you what, that Wait, couch is way more that. freaking comfortable back then. This is terrible. <laughs> I hate <laughs> this couch. <laughs> like, what angle do I work? <laughs> no, it's good. I remember from that first episode, that the wine filled with tears, and then, yes. yeah, <laughs> freaking hilarious. Thank you guys. Oh my yeah, god, thank you, yeah, thank you guys. Awesome. Thank you guys for having us.